Time now for the morning rush. New Mexico leaders are taking advantage of the chance to speak with the head of the FBI. That's about Albuquerque's crime problem. Director, for, Director Christopher Ray paid a visit to Albuquerque yesterday, meeting with the state's top law enforcement officials. Now, he said that a suggested program that could help is the FBI's Violent Crime and Gang Task Force. We now know more this morning about a Rio Rancho driving school instructor that is set to lose his license tomorrow for six months. A DOT investigating found and a DOT investigator found that Francisco Sainz was behaving unethically and putting student safety in jeopardy. Sainz now must take gender sensitivity training, an anger management course, and a teaching course. Looking ahead, the career fair will be held this Saturday at Metro Court. It's going to be set from 10 to 1 at the Educational Services Center north of the courthouse. Staff will answer questions and walk people through the application process. Now, you should bring a current resume and proof of education. Eric. Our next weather maker is arriving here. We're going to be seeing those clouds increase all throughout our Thursday and then some late day rain and snow showers. Biden administration is unveiling a brand new one stop online resource for COVID-19 information on COVID.gov. You can find information about vaccines, tests, treatments and masks, as well as a new test to treat locator tool to help people access locations where they offer COVID-19 tests and antiviral pills. New Mexico's COVID vaccine recommendations are now aligned with the latest CDC guidelines. The Department of Health now recommends an additional booster dose for anyone older than 50 and those for those rather with certain immune deficiencies. People are eligible for that shot four months after their last booster. A $21 million construction project is underway at the Santa Fe Regional Airport this morning. That project includes expanding and remodeling the terminal with a new departure and arrival gate. Also, the expansion of TSA screening area and new concessions facility along with uh, so much more. Work is expected to wrap up in January of next year. Eric. All right, only a 1 out of 10 for that threat index, at least here in the metro area. A pretty cold start overall, but much lighter afternoon wind with respect to yesterday. The Mexican gray wolf population continues to grow this morning. A survey done by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service says there are nearly 200 Mexican gray wolves living in the wild between New Mexico and Arizona. This is the sixth year that the population has grown. New news for you this morning. The White House says senior advisors to Russian President Vladimir Putin are afraid to tell him the truth about the war in Ukraine. Officials say that could complicate a future peace agreement. If Putin thinks he's in better shape than he really is, we'll follow the latest for you. Starting tonight, there will be night construction on I-40 between Unser and 98th. It will last from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. with eastbound traffic being reduced to one lane. Then starting tomorrow, various 98th Street or Unser ramps will be closed for about two months. Eric. All right, well, we are looking at uh, traffic here this morning. No accidents to report, which is great news. The tracker is heading eastbound on I-40 near 12th Street. Around 70 vervet monkeys are making their home in a mangrove preserve next to Fort Lauderdale's International Airport. Wildlife advocates say the goal of their new home is to offer sanctuary for any monkey that gets into danger or is at risk of euthanasia. All right, time for the five facts. At number five, the Duke City Gladiators are putting smiles on the faces of kids in the International District with free haircuts. The DA's office partnered with the Duke City Gladiators and the Albuquerque Barber College to put on cuts for communities. Children from the neighborhood were invited to drop by for a new do, lots of goodies, and a chance to hang out with players from the Gladiators. DA's office says that this is the latest initiative that is going to be featuring its mobile resource center. Number four now, after a tough battle with cancer, one Albuquerque student was finally able to graduate from Freedom High School early. Cristian Medina is the first 2022 graduate from Freedom High. Medina was diagnosed with acute lipoblastic leukemia when he was seven years old. He underwent chemo and radiation and was in remission for 10 years until he had a seizure. Doctors discovered a brain tumor. During treatment, doctors say the teen never gave up hope of being able to finish school. And number three, get outside and enjoy this afternoon. Uh, still some breezes across southern New Mexico, but not as bad or as violent as yesterday. And warming temperatures into the weekend. Number two, we're learning more this morning on a Rio Rancho driving school instructor, which is set to lose his license for six months starting tomorrow. The DOT prompted an investigation into the old school of driving in Rio Rancho and found that driving instructor Francisco Sainz behaving was behaving unethically, putting students' safety in jeopardy. Several teens and parents say that uh, taking the driving test became terrifying due to verbal and physical abuse. Science now must take gender sensitivity training, an anger management course, and a teaching course. And at number one this morning, New Mexico leaders are taking advantage of the opportunity to speak with the head of the FBI about Albuquerque's crime problem. 
Director Christopher Ray paid a visit to Albuquerque yesterday, meeting with the state's top law enforcement leaders. And now he called last year's uptick in murders, quote, truly horrifying. But he said that a program that could help is the FBI's Violent Crime and Gang Task Force, which includes federal, state, and local agencies.